and welcome to a new series all to do with these Max 7219 driven LED matrices. I'm not sure how many parts this series is going to have but it's going to have quite a few because it's quite an in-depth subject once you get into it. However, don't let me put you off, it's very easy to get scrolling text on these screens. Um, things I'm going to go into is how you get the scrolling stuff on the screen but then what I'm doing with them so my first project I've made is a well time clock um, which was quite interesting I learned loads doing it um, which you know you're setting up time servers and everything so that it's not just matrices that this will be covering it will be you know how do you get other data from other sensors onto matrices like using the natural time clocks to get the time use a temperature sensor which we've used in other videos to show temperature on the screen humidity etc etc so marco is the guy who's written these this powerful parola library so he, he's done all the heavy lifting we're just enjoying his hard work um so yeah um let, let's get this thing hooked up so you can see on the screen how i've wired my d1 mini up and um, because we're using the spi connections there the pins i've selected if you're following along with Arduino, you just have to look on the Arduino to see which pins you need to connect um, onto or between your Arduino and the and the matrices. Just make sure on the matrices that you do connect to D in, as they do have a D out. Because when you cascade these displays, you're literally joining them all together. Um, but if you connect to D out it's not going to work you have to connect the D in so that could be the first trip hazard of this series connecting up wrong but that's enough waffle let's get on to the video and let's get some LEDs flashing because that's what you've come here for so the first thing we need to do is get the libraries installed so sketch include library manage libraries md underscore and this is one we're looking for it's the only one by marco underscore c and some digits as obviously his hotmail address um, if i've already got it installed so your install button may be highlighted so just click that and it will install then after you've done that you need a uh, MD Max 72XX. And again, it's the one by Marco. I have it installed. So yours will be should be highlighted if you haven't got it. Install it. Once you've installed it, I always like to restart um, the Arduino IDE just to make sure the libraries are picked up. Okay, so we have the SPI library that's already installed. So here we're defining a, a wait time. This is 1,500 milliseconds, and this is just to give us some form of delay between the images that are going to appear on the screen. So we come, well, we will cover this one now. There seems to be four different hardware variants of the matrices so these matrices or individual matrices there's four different types so if you define the wrong hardware type you'll get gobbledygook on your screen and you'll think you've got some dodgy wiring but it's not but we'll cover that i'm going to show you what happens if you get the wrong one so then we need to define how many matrices we've got this is a single matrix so it's eight by eight and we've got eight by 32 so we've got four so as on the intro slide i need to de here define that the pins between the in my case the sp32 and the matrix so i've used these pins which is the standard spi connections so make sure you get your pins right otherwise your your matrix is not going to work so the first thing we need to actually code is this we're defining the hardware type so we have to give it a name and in my case i've named it p you can name it anything you like you could call it matrix panel or matrix 
but whatever you call here, you need to include further down here. So I've used P. So in the void, we are initializing this the, the display. So we're going to turn the get the display um, to work. Clear the display. Now this is an important line, set intensity. As I've listed here, the intensity goes from 0 to 15. I've set it on 1, which is more than ample for um, testing. You can actually go up to about 6 on a small matrix. Because we're powering the matrix from the pins on the ESP chip, the chip can only give out 500 milliamps. The higher the intensity, the brighter the lights. Now, even though it looks washed out on the screen, on intensity 1, that is a nice red colour. And I can see it and I'm sitting under the light because I'm making this video. So, 1 is safe. And in another video, I'll show you what draw, or ampage draw, is coming um, from the chip into the, into the matrix. So a low intensity is critical when you're powering the matrices from um, the chip itself and not a separate power line going to a, another bench power supply or a battery pack. Setting first, I just include this to make sure that the matrix will display the letters or numbers or the text in dots. If you have an inverted display, all the LED uh, will be on and the letters or characters you're trying to display will be off so that's why I put it in there okay so here's the uh, um, the good part of the program just ways to get different types of text onto the matrix so we're again using p dot print hello in, in inverted commas and then that will print hello p print one two three four comma decimal it will print the decimal value of that number same thing again but uh, hex at the end it will print the hex value of that number <clears throat> you don't need to add a decimal at the end to print the number if you just do print 12 it will print number 12 this was quite strange i wanted to print 14.7 however the <clears throat> the library seems to want to print to two decimal places so it will print 14.70 now this one caught me out uh, in arduino and espt esp code you can use print ln which gives you a line return at the end um, however that doesn't work on the matrix and it gives us this funny thing on the screen so this is a frozen uh, image of print uh, p dot print ln in brackets uh, speech marks end and it gives us that so it doesn't like it so remember not to use the ln command if you want to print end just use the print end uh, command here now we're doing something slightly different we're using print write 77 and as example you can print ascii code values which is very similar to printing normal here um, but I thought I'd just show it and if you want to read more about ASCII values there is the link here so I didn't show you about this this uh, print ASCII values so if we just look at this web page here th this is the ASCII printable character table so we asked it to print character 77 which is down here and it was an uppercase m so that's where it printed um, there are other um, characters you can print out if you want to use the ASCII table but i just thought i'd show that um, because not many people have shown that online so if you just want to print 77 you do um, print 77 instead of write 77 write 77 is doing the ascii value then if you use write, you can still do um, <coughs> the alphabet and numbers, but you just use one speech mark. So let's get this code, uh, and the, the wait time here is what we coded here. So if you wanted to make it go around faster, you could change that to a thousand, which is one second instead of 1.5 seconds. 
so <clears throat> let's just get this uploaded and make sure you, you've got um, preferences if you're using the 8266 I'll leave this in the video description you need to have this additional boards manager installed so the 8266 boards will appear obviously this code will work with Arduino and all you have to do is make sure you've got your pin numbers right shouldn't take long to upload as it's a very small sketch although my computer is running extremely slow at the moment so let's see what it should do so it should say hello Yeah, it's almost there, almost complete. So there's hello, one, two, three, four, the number in decimal, 12, the float number with the extra digit at the end, the strange end, and that's it. So we've, we've got text on the screen. So that's just making sure that you've got a, a working screen. Now, if you don't see this nice clear text we're going to go back up here because this is the thing that can trip you up you need to make sure that you've defined your hardware correct now from what i can understand most of these boards that come off ebay and from china use the top hardware definition which is fc16 underscore hw but you've got three other choices so let's see what happens to the code if you define the wrong one and I know what happens obviously because I've done it so you'll find that you'll no longer get legible um, characters on the display they'll be illegible or they'll be moving vertically so this one now this one's moving vertically and it's all to do with how the matrices are wired so that's obviously the wrong one so that's generic let's move on to Parola HW and you can only define one of these at a time so if you get anything similar to this on your screen it's not faulty just change the hardware definition excuse me and um, it should spring into life see this one is still not legible that was the Prola HW and the last one is IC station which I have seen some IC station ones on on the internet going around so you're not gonna break your display you're not gonna corrupt your chip if you get it wrong it's just the information being sent to the screen is obviously wrong so let's get it working again so that was no major drama the other thing you can get wrong is um, the number of devices. So, as I said earlier, this is one device. So you've got six, six, sorry, eight by eight, which is sixty-four LEDs, and that's the maximum LEDs the chip can drive. So now we're back to normal. Now this is a four-way uh, board. So these boards, when you're wiring them up, the wiring them up, these ones are quite obvious where you connect to because these are easier to connect to than these ones so this is if you see the middle pin it says d in data in and if you could look under if you took the, the matrix off it would say d out so if you connect to these pins as input it was not going to work this is used when you daisy chain the screens together so if you had another screen this is not a good example because this is a square one you can solder solder these together d out to d in and your daisy change the beauty of buying them already made this is one pcb with four matrix already joined there is no soldering you just join the pins here and if you wanted to daisy chain another um four on or more you would connect to these pins and that's what I've done so in a future video 
You'll see this bad boy. So this is a this is a 12 way. And the plastic thing on the top is a 3D printed screen to change the um, to change the LEDs into squares. So if I if I put some paper on here because I've got the intensity low, you probably can't let me turn my light off. You can see they've now gone square. So that's in another video. It says how how can you make round LEDs square if you've got a 3D printer that is. Um, so that's that. So yeah, so if you incorrectly make this one, or saying we've only got one device, we've actually got four, what will happen is it will duplicate itself down the screens, but because it's sending the data wrong, it won't be a full copy. Sometimes they shift down and lead like right there, it's shifting down. So that is because I'm saying I've only got one Max connected where I've actually got four. So again, if you get something similar to this happening, make sure you got that right. So let's just set that back to four and upload it again. So that's a very quick introduction to getting your screens working. And once you are got this far, the Pro Library is easy. Once someone shows you how to use it, um, say I'm making a well time clock, I'm going to use a time server so there's no real time clock. So th this chip will join the internet, it will then get the time off the internet, it will update the time server and then display times around the world. We'll also be using um, temperature and humidity sensors to get temperature and data onto the screen. Other things you can do with these screens is that you can divide the screen into sections. So obviously better with, you know, if you had a 12 way or an eight way, which we'll cover in another video. So you can say the first seven screens is one zone and the next three is another zone and you can make stuff scroll but it won't scroll into the other zone and and there's lots of um there's lots of scrolling and effects you can do without a lot of code it's just putting in some basic parameters and you can get the thing looking very flashy and that's what we're going to do in the next few videos start to get our screen looking pretty at the moment is just boring um, although I do like flashy lights so that's it um, I think we've covered everything you should have a working matrix now and make sure you like and subscribe if you subscribe you won't miss the next videos and I'm going to try and push these videos out pretty quickly as it's so damn hot outside at the moment which is 37 to 39 degrees it's too hot to go cycling and make a cycling video so I'm catching up on some of my coding. So that's Andy wishing you a good afternoon for now.